Hello and welcome to the session on Features and Characteristics of Medieval Philosophy. Medieval Philosophy, as we have seen, had gone through several phases starting from patristic period to the period of High Middle Ages. These phases were marked with important historical events and as a result they impacted the features of medieval philosophy. For example, the philosophy of the early medieval period was impacted by the dominance of the church as a center of education, unavailability of Greek texts and relative stagnation of intellectual activities in the dark ages. The philosophy of the high middle ages on the other hand was marked with an increased revival in intellectual activities, the availability of Greek texts, rise of scholasticism and the emergence of early universities. Thus we can say that the different phases of medieval philosophy exhibited unique features and characteristics. It should be noted that all such features were central to shaping western philosophy into what it is today. This unit will analyze those features and characteristics by placing them within their historical context. We will analyze the following features and characteristics in the coming modules of this unit. The influence of Neoplatonism, the theological character of medieval philosophy, the emergence of philosophical theology, the rise of scholasticism, the advent of new forms of education unavailability and later availability of Greek texts. An analysis of these features and characteristics will help us understand how they influenced the overall development of medieval philosophy. Influence of Neoplatonism Neoplatonism was one of the major influences on almost every great thinker of medieval philosophy. It was a school of mystical philosophy that emerged during the 3rd century. The term Neoplatonism was invented by 19th century historians to distinguish the ideas of Roman and Greek Platonists from the ideas of Plato himself. The key feature of this philosophical school was the mystical interpretation of Plato. It is generally agreed that an Egyptian philosopher named Plotinus founded this school. He was an influential figure of the classical period and his ideas inspired many thinkers throughout late antiquity and early medieval period. Metaphysicians of pagan, Christian, Jewish and Islamic traditions drew heavily from his philosophical ideas. As the name suggests, Neoplatonism was based primarily on the ideas and writings of Plato and early Platonists. As a school of philosophy, it gave more emphasis to the spiritual and cosmological aspects of Platonic thought. It also tried to combine Platonian philosophy with Jewish and Egyptian theology. It was Plotinus who reshaped and redefined Platonic philosophy into Neoplatonism. Another great Neoplatonist philosopher whose influence can be seen in medieval philosophy was Porphyry of Tyre. His famous book Isagoge, which was an introduction to Aristotle's famous work titled Categories was translated from Greek to Latin by the medieval philosopher Boethius. It was used as a standard textbook for logic throughout the medieval period. Disdain for the material world was one of the strongest themes of Neoplatonist school. In his works, Plato made a distinction between the world of tangible things and the world of forms. According to him, the physical world was changeable and imperfect while the world of forms was constant and perfect. Plotinus used this distinction to explain the presence of evil. Since the physical world is one that changes constantly, it can never be fully known. True knowledge can be attained only by thinking about the perfect forms. Using this distinction, the Neoplatonists described the relationship between body and soul. They proposed that the soul is eternal and perfect, but it is trapped inside an imperfect body. So, if the soul can realize its true perfection, it has to break free from the imperfect body. This argument put forward by the Neoplatonists influenced the thinkers and theologians of the early medieval period to a great extent. The major medieval philosophers who were influenced by certain strands of Neoplatonism include 
Augustine, Boethius, John Scotus Erigena and Bonaventure. Another key feature of Neoplatonism is its pantheist nature. Neoplatonist thinkers did not make a distinction between the God and the world. Instead, they considered all existence as emanating from a single source, which that called the One. They also believed that an individual soul can be mystically united with this single source. According to them, an individual could climb the ladder of being through the contemplation of the divine. Christian Neoplatonism The name Christian Neoplatonism is self-evident and tells us what it is all about. It, as the name suggests, was the intersection of Platonism, Neoplatonism and Christian doctrine. Most of the philosophers of early medieval period were deep rooted in theology. Also, medieval period witnessed the strong influence of the church, Christian institutions and biblical doctrines. It was natural that these theologians were influenced by Neoplatonist ideas. It was also natural that they tried to synthesize Christian doctrines with Neoplatonist thoughts. The result was Christian Neoplatonism which was founded by St. Augustine of Hippo. However, it should be noted that Augustine eventually turned away from Neoplatonist ideas. The Theological Character of Medieval Philosophy Another important defining feature of medieval philosophy was its theological character. The medieval period is generally regarded as a period of great philosophical development which was heavily influenced by Christian theology. It is interesting to know that almost every thinker of medieval period were preoccupied with theological concerns. Most of them did not even consider themselves as philosophers. One such thinker of the medieval philosophy was Thomas Aquinas. He criticized philosophers for always falling short of the true and proper wisdom to be found in Christian revelation. But the medieval thinkers used the ideas and techniques of the classical philosophers to find answers to difficult theological questions. The works of medieval thinkers exhibit three distinct characteristics. Firstly, they used logic, dialectic and analysis in their philosophical attempts to discover truth. Secondly, they respected and were influenced by the insights of ancient philosophers, especially Aristotle and Plato. Thirdly, they tried to coordinate the insights of philosophy with the teachings of theology. This way, tried to resolve the conflicts between philosophy and scriptures. The predominance of theological themes in medieval philosophy. Since medieval philosophy was centered on theology, we can see a lot of theological or biblical themes in the writings of medieval philosophers. The relation between faith and reason was one of the most heavily debated themes of the medieval period. Different thinkers of the period were of different opinions with regard to this much controversial topic. Jewish Islamic thinkers such as Avicenna and Averroes were more on the side of reason. St. Augustine stated that he would never allow his philosophical investigations to go beyond the authority of God. To him, the solution to the problem was to first believe and then seek to understand. Thinkers such as St. Anselm took an approach that allowed for both faith and reason. Another major theological theme taken up by medieval philosophers was the incompatibility between human free will and divine predetermination. Other themes include the nature of God, faith, divine illumination, existence of God and the presence of evil. These themes will be discussed in detail in the next unit. Philosophical Theology Many greatest philosophers of the medieval times were highly trained theologians, but in their work they addressed important philosophical issues. Moreover, they took a philosophical approach to understanding the world. They used philosophical ideas, arguments and highly sophisticated logical and conceptual analysis in their works. This mode of conducting theological studies in a philosophical manner is regarded as one the greatest achievements of medieval philosophy. 
This method is called philosophical theology. Though Christianity is not philosophical doctrine in itself, it greatly influenced the medieval philosophical worldview. The role played by theology in shaping the course of philosophy can be seen in two different realms. Firstly, as we have already seen, Christian texts and doctrines served as the most important subject matter for philosophical thoughts and discussions. In addition to this, the central claims of Christianity forced medieval philosophers to come up with an exhaustive account of reality. It also made them deal with the aims and methods of the philosophical enterprise. Seen from this angle, we can say that Christianity was taken up into the tradition of philosophy. Secondly, Christian theology added to the content of philosophy. It also changed the structure and methods of philosophical enterprise. But it should also be noted that Christianity imposed some external constraints on the philosophy of medieval times. Many a time such constraints were applied institutionally. Texts were prohibited officially, philosophical positions were condemned by Christian institutions and individuals were censored. According to modern historians, the foundation for medieval philosophical theology was laid by St. Augustine of Hippo. He maintained the view that Christian belief is not against philosophy's search for truth. According to him, Christian belief acts as an important addition and support to philosophy. Since Christian philosophers know the revealed truth, they are able to retrieve what is true and reject what is false in pagan philosophy. In Augustinian's opinion, philosophy can enrich and strengthen Christianity. Augustine proposed a method that is based on belief and seeking understanding. In this method, Christian philosophers should begin by believing what Christianity professes. Then they should use reason by seeking to get an understanding of what they initially believed. By seeking understanding, Christian philosophers are relying on reason. By gaining understanding, they are strengthening the foundation of Christian belief. This Augustinian method of belief seeking understanding was a popular thought among philosophers during medieval times. Augustine's philosophical writings give us the best examples of how theological topics can be reflected upon in a philosophical manner. He dealt with topics ranging from the nature of sin to the nature of trinity. Another thinker who worked along the same lines was Boethius. He wrote a number of short theological treatises that used the tools of Aristotelian logic on issues associated with Christian doctrines. Medieval philosophers were inspired by the philosophical analysis and argumentation in such writings. They actively participated in the development and extension of philosophical theology. Emergence of theology as an academic discipline. By the 12th and 13th centuries, an academic structure was started emerging in European schools and universities. As a result, theology became the supreme academic discipline in a formal curriculum of higher education. The thinkers who studied theology had highly trained philosophical minds. So, they used their philosophical sensitivities, interests and skills when they started taking up the study of theology. It is true that they accepted the basic framework offered by Christianity and made use of that framework to give a comprehensive account of the world. But they were equally engaged in the broadly philosophical task of building on that framework, understanding its complications and resolving its problems. The Augustinian view was the most dominant among the views that attempted to understand the relation between philosophy and Christianity. But there were other groups with different views as well and many such views maintained a resistance to philosophy. They were against using philosophical methods to understand Christianity. Some of them considered the study of logic as a dangerous influence on theology. They even used the power of the church to attack thinkers and prohibit some of the philosophical teachings. Rise of Scholasticism Now we come to one of the most important features of medieval philosophy that is the emergence of a school of critical thought named Scholasticism. 
it can be defined as a medieval school of philosophy or a critical method of learning. It was dominant among the academics of medieval European universities from 12th to 16th centuries. Scholasticism tried to combine logic, metaphysics and semantics. According to modern philosophers, this school of thought contributed considerably to the current understanding of logic. Scholasticism was applied in medieval Christian theology as an attempt to reconcile the philosophy of the ancient classical philosophers particularly Aristotle, with Christian theology. But during the high middle ages, especially during the 14th century, it moved beyond theology. From 14th century onwards, scholasticism was applied to various disciplines of learning including epistemology, philosophy of science, philosophy of nature and psychology. Features of scholasticism it is possible to identify six broad characteristics of scholasticism. They are, at the time of its emergence, scholasticism accepted of the prevailing Catholic orthodoxy. Even while accepting Catholic orthodoxy, it accepted Aristotle as a greater thinker than Plato. It recognized that Aristotle and Plato differed on the question about the problem of universals. It considered the problem of universals as an important question to be resolved. It gave heavy emphasis to dialectical thinking and syllogistic reasoning. It accepted the distinction between natural theology and revealed theology. It displayed a tendency to dispute everything at great length and in minute details. Origins of Scholasticism as we have already seen, scholasticism was originated in medieval Europe around 12th century. Some scholars argue that the origins of scholasticism can be dated back to the Carolingian Renaissance period because it was during this period that a major renewal of learning happened. According to them, John Scotus Eurigena was one of the first forerunners of scholasticism. During the 11th century, it was shaped by Peter Abelard and St. Anselm of Canterbury. However, it has been generally agreed that the high period of scholasticism was the 13th and 14th centuries. It is interesting to note that due to the important scholasticism, that period is even referred to as the scholastic period. You have already seen in the last chapter the major events happened in Europe during the 13th and 14th centuries. The interest in the work of Aristotle was recovered through translations and there was an increase in philosophical activities due to the rise of universities. The philosophers of the period found it necessary to reconcile this newly recovered corpus of Aristotelian philosophy with the theological doctrines of the Catholic orthodoxy. Scholasticism was central to this project of reconciling philosophy with theology. Some of the important figures of scholasticism include Anselm of Canterbury, Peter Abelard, Alexander of Hales, Albertus Magnus, Dan Scotus, William of Ockham, Bonaventure and St. Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas renowned work Summa Theologica is generally regarded as a fine example of medieval scholasticism. Other features and characteristics of medieval philosophy. Rise of new forms of school. Another important feature of the medieval philosophy was the influence of new forms of schools. There were four main types of educational practices in medieval Europe. These forms of education had heavy influence on the development of philosophical ideas. One, monastic schools. This was a type of educational practice existed even in the early medieval period. These schools were associated with monasteries. It is important to note that some of the major philosophical works of medieval period came out of such schools. For example, St. Anselm of Canterbury wrote some of his important works at the monastic school of Beck. 2. Individual Masters From 11th century onwards, there were scholars who occasionally set up schools of their own. They gathered students around such schools. However, this practice declined by mid-12th century. 
Many such schools were itinerant in nature and depended on the popularity of the teacher to a great extent. Peter Abelard is believed to have attended such a school and he later established one himself. 3. Cathedral Schools These schools were associated with the official church and were similar to monastic schools. The main purpose of these schools was to train clerics but they taught others as well occasionally. 4. Medieval Universities According to historians, the medieval period has contributed to the modern world two major institutions, parliament and university. The medieval universities did not come into being all of a sudden, instead they frequently grew out of cathedral schools. For example, the cathedral school at Paris was transformed into the University of Paris by the 13th century. Let me summarize the session. Even though medieval philosophy was widely varied in its development and growth, certain salient features and characteristics can be identified. Each chronological phase in the history of medieval philosophy is marked with unique features and some features were common to all these phases. One of the defining characteristics of medieval philosophy was the predominance of theology. Most of the thinkers during this period were preoccupied with theological concerns. The writings of medieval philosophers can be seen as falling under the category of philosophical theology. They used the techniques and methods of philosophy to resolve many theological issues. Another striking feature of medieval philosophy was the influence of Neoplatonism. The thinkers of the period drew heavily from the ideas of Neoplatonism. They tried to blend these ideas with that of Christian theology. As a result, a new mode of thinking named Christian Neoplatonism was emerged. The third characteristic of medieval philosophy was the unavailability of Greek texts during the early Middle Ages. However, almost every work of Aristotle was made available by the 13th century, which influenced the further development of philosophical ideas in the high Middle Ages. The medieval period is marked with yet another important feature, the rise of scholasticism. A related feature was the emergence of new forms of educational practices. All these characteristics defined both the nature and the content of medieval philosophy to a great extent. Now you can try to answer the questions given here. What is Neoplatonism? What were its main features? Who were the main figures of Neoplatonism? How did Neoplatonism influence medieval theologians and philosophers? Define Christian Neoplatonism. What were the three main characteristics in the writings of early medieval philosophers? What are the theological or biblical themes that come frequently in the writings of medieval philosopher? What are the main features of scholasticism? Who were the main philosophers associated with scholasticism? Hope that you may go through the reference books given here. The Rutledge History of Philosophy, Volume 3, The Middle Ages, edited by John Mayernburn, Rutledge, London, in 1998. Medieval Philosophy and the Classical Tradition in Islam, Judaism and Christianity, edited by John English, Rutledge, London, New York, in 2002. Medieval Philosophy by Paul Vincent Spade in the Oxford Illustrated History of Philosophy edited by Anthony Kenny, Oxford University Press, Oxford in 1994. Medieval Philosophy by Scott MacDonald and Norman Kretschmann in Routledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy edited by E. Craig, Routledge, London in 1998. A Companion to Philosophy in the Middle Ages by George J. E. Garcia and Timothy B. Noon, Blackwell Publishing, Berlin in 2002. Encyclopedia of Medieval Philosophy, Philosophy Between 500 and 1500, Volume 1, edited by Peter Adamson and Henrik Lagerland, Springer, New York in 2011. Thank you for watching this program. We can meet again with another topic soon. Till then, take care.